ഒത്തൊരുമിച്ച് പ്രവർത്തിച്ച് മുന്നേറി നമ്മുടെ ലക്ഷ്യത്തിലേക്ക് എത്തുവാൻ നമ്മളെ എല്ലാവരെയും സർവേശ്വൻ അനുഗ്രഹിക്കട്ടെ ഈ കോളേജിൻ്റെ ഭാഗത്ത് നിന്ന് ഒരു ചെയർമാൻ എന്ന രീതിയിലും എല്ലാ രീതിയിലും എല്ലാ സഹായ സഹകരണങ്ങളും ഈ അവസരത്തിൽ ഞാൻ പൂർണ്ണമായിട്ടും വാഗ്വാനം ചെയ്തുകൊണ്ട് തൽക്കാലം നിർത്തുന്നു നമസ്കാരം നന്ദി താങ്ക് യു സർ നെക്സ്റ്റ് ഐ ലൈക് ടു കോൾ അപ്പ് ഓൺ സ്റ്റേജ് അ പ്രിൻസിപ്പൽ ഡോക്ടർ എ ബി തോമസ് തച്ചിൽ the sculptor of human character a seasoned scholar and a navigator of this flagship of knowledge to deliver the keynote address chief guest of the day dr bina respected chairman engineer venu gopal our vice principal and head of the department of civil engineering professor radha krishnan Brigadier Joseph Matthew, Dean of Student Affairs. My dear faculty members and guests and my dear students, I'm very glad to be here before you on this auspicious occasion of the launch of the Civil Engineering Association this morning. I consider myself to be lucky here to share these moments with you. At the very outset, let me thank Dr. Bina, my erstwhile colleague of QSAT, for taking the trouble to come over to this remote and distant place from QSAT. She very graciously and readily agreed to spend her valuable time with us today. I thank her on my personal behalf for agreeing to come here and gracing this occasion. Now coming to the function at hand, I agree with uh, Dr. Prof. Radhakrishnan, civil engineering is the oldest and the most mature branch of engineering. It has reached a great level of development and growth. Probably the epic march of civil engineering started from the times of the cave dweller when he started arranging his rocks to fashion out crude tables and chairs so civil engineering contributes directly to the comfort of the human species in making abodes in providing water and wells providing roads in short it directly improves the comfort of human life we are every day building stronger buildings taller buildings longer bridges wider bridges so the achievements of civil engineering continues continue unabated but then there are new challenges facing the civil engineer of course i don't forget that civil engineers employ probably the maximum number of people provide the maximum number of jobs and as i said they provide ma- take up massive construction projects schools colleges hospitals which all directly improves the quality of human life in every way possible but then coming back to the issue of challenges faced by the civil engineer certain things come to my mind which the civil engineer will have to worry about in a big way for example as people knock down old buildings and go for newer more modern buildings the question of disposal of construction waste is a big problem which we have still addressed how to get rid of the massive amount of waste generated when we knock down old buildings and construct new buildings so because most construction now involves small houses or even medium sized houses we are not much bothered about it but in future when we knock down big hospitals big colleges or such buildings the amount of construction debris generated will be very large 
now as long as there are areas to be filled up landfill and other things can provide solutions to this issue but i tell you such routes are fast drying up there are the in future very soon there won't be any lands that needs filling up so the civil engineer must be worrying about this in a big way another worrying aspect is civil engineering as a discipline is an important part of technical activity which consumes large amounts of natural resources when you make cement you are using up so much of limestone coal sand and then steel it comes from iron ore so a little differentiated from other branches of engineering like electronics or computer science civil engineering draws upon the resources of nature in a very very big way so the rate at which these are being depleted now is a matter of concern the civil engineer will have to address this issue or though for the moment at least in our immediate vicinity we are not bothered about these things at all that what is most visible to us is the shortage of river sand for so many reasons we are not able to take up river sand because mostly when you quarry sand in a big way the rivers dry up sooner than later so now we are going through a transition stage when there is some control over sand mining but that is being sabotaged all the time by loose implementation of rules and through bribery and other means sand is continuously being mined from the rivers of course we are using uh, quarry sand quarry dust to some extent for instead of river sand now but then it is not solving the problem in fact this issue is not properly yet addressed you cannot use quarry sand for plastering especially if you want good finish and quarry sand has also a slightly different ph from river sand so that can also create problems now we have to solve this problem otherwise our rivers will die and the people in these parts of the world will pay a high price for it so the question of aggregates in concrete has to be properly studied and a very viable replacement found out yet another challenge for the civil engineer is the impact of huge civil engineering projects on nature how they upset the ecology of local areas so there is a big controversy going on right now about the adrapalli project you know so there are a large number of people who want the adrapalli project to come up it can be a great support to the power starved state of kerala but then several hundred hectares of forest land will be reclaimed or you can say totally deforested in the process to what extent can we tolerate this we don't want to stop the march of technology in any way but then destruction of forests drying up of rivers all this will create havoc to human life in future for future generations so where to draw the line so this again is another a dig for the civil engineer how to construct projects especially gigantic projects without damaging the ecology so such problems more than newer reaching newer heights of achievement will be of greater concern to civil engineer in future so i hope my young engineers to be will spend their valuable time at least in future to spend a few moments to think about such problems their profession is facing the great branch of civil engineering is facing now to my want to also remind my young engineers to be civil engineers to be that such occasions as the 
inauguration of an associ professional association has greater objectives than all the fund we have today here. So the greater objective of this event is to create a professional interest in young people in civil engineering in your own chosen area of this area. So even after you leave this institution, you must continue your engineering interest in civil engineering. You must give up your study of civil engineering. Civil engineering must advance through your young minds. So it is with this objective that professional associations are increased in college campuses.